Apple Reminders has gotten a lot more sophisticated recently. Let me show you one thing it can do. Later today, I'm going to the gym, and when I come home, I want to remind myself to stretch a specific muscle. So I'm just going to say stretch my hip flexors, and I'm going to tap the location button and then tap arriving at home. Now when I get home, the Reminders app will notify me and say, hey, you were supposed to stretch your hip flexors. I want to help you decide whether you should use Reminders, and if so, what you should use it for. We'll start by going over some of the features in the Reminders app. Let me create a new reminder, and I'm going to say, talk to Eje about potential new venue. Let's say this is something I want to do for my Toastmasters public speaking club. I want to talk to a specific person about something. Now, if I just open that reminder by tapping the I button, the info button, you'll see that there's a lot going on. You know, let's walk through the steps. I can add a note. I can say, maybe say, hey, this is something specific I was going to mention to her. I can add a URL. So if this is a reminder related to a specific web page, I could paste the URL to the web page here. I can say, hey, I want this reminder to be scheduled for a specific date. So I can tap the date toggle and I can say, let's say I want to do this on Wednesday, August 17th. Now, if I tap done and I just go out of here for a second and then I can tap the scheduled button at the top right, then you'll see that for Wednesday, August 17th, I've scheduled this particular reminder. What does it mean to schedule a reminder? This means that on Wednesday, August 17th, the Reminders app is going to send me a notification telling me to do this. Now, if I go back to this list and open this reminder, I have not set a specific time. So that means Reminders is going to remind me, meaning send me a notification, right? Remind me of this at the default time, which you can change in the Reminders app settings in the settings app, okay? I can customize the time, however. I can say, hey, remind me of this at 1 p.m., remind me of this at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. or something like that. Okay, that's pretty obvious. What it's going to do if you set the time is send a notification at that time. Now, let me just turn the time off. I can have this repeat. So if I had a different reminder, for example, I could say water the plants and I go into the settings there. I can say, let's say I want to do that today, but then I can also scroll down and I can say repeat this daily, right? And repeat never. So I can say done. And now this reminder will get regenerated every single day, reminding me to water the plants. Let me go back in to this um, initial reminder. I can add tags to a specific reminder. So for example, this is related to my Toastmasters Public Speaking Club. So I can actually start typing Toastmasters and then tap done. Now you'll see that this has the hashtag Toastmasters tag. Now, one of the cool things about this is that these tags synchronize with the tags that you may already be using in Apple Notes. So for example, for this water the plants tag or task, Reminder, I can actually tap the tag thing. I can start typing home and you'll see that it suggests hashtag home. I don't have any reminders yet that have this hashtag, but I do have these hashtags inside my Apple Notes app. That's why it's suggesting that. Okay, let me just tap done. Now, when I go back to the main screen, I go to the bottom, you'll see that there's this tag list. And so I can filter my reminders by tag like this or like this. Again, it may look slightly different for you if you're not on iOS 16 yet. Let me go back to the reminder I've been using. Now we can remind us at a specific location as I showed you earlier. So you can just do that and you can say it can be when you're arriving at home, when you're leaving a place, when you're getting into your car, when you're getting out of your car, there's a bunch of things you can do. And of course you can remind yourself at a custom location as well. You can also get a reminder, meaning a notification when you are messaging someone with the Apple Messages app. So I don't use the Apple Messages app too much, so I don't find that useful. But if that's something that you rely on all the time, it could be very handy. You can flag reminders. So if I just toggle the flag over here and then I tap done, you'll see that there's a special section here for flagged reminders. So let's say you have a lot of reminders. You could flag the most important ones, tap flagged and see them over there. And you can also remove the flag again and then it will no longer appear under flagged. So that's pretty simple, I think. Now back in here, what else can we do? We can give reminders a priority. So if you wanted to, you can say it has a low, medium or high priority. I don't find that particularly helpful, but it's a rudimentary way of organizing your reminders. Now you can of course change the list that this particular um, reminder lives in. We'll talk more about lists in a minute. You can also create subtasks. So those are essentially sort of sub reminders and you can say um, venue A, 
venue B and venue C, you get the idea. This can be handy for creating a little bit more detail in your reminder and it will look like this, right? You can also, by the way, drag one reminder underneath another one like so. Doesn't make any sense in this case, but you can do that and you can just drag it back out as well. Dragging is a bit finicky sometimes. Let's drag it out. Maybe I should just drag it up here. There we go, that's better. Okay, so you can do that. Um, and finally, you can add images to reminders. So if I just tap add image, you can scan a document, you can take a photo, or you can grab a photo from your photos app, your photo library. Okay, so you can organize your reminders into different lists. And so actually, if I go to the main screen of my reminders app, you'll see that I have a bunch of different lists. So first of all, I have this these auto generated lists, which is the today. So things that you know I assigned to do today, like watering the plants, and also things, it will show you reminders for the location where you are. So stretch my hip flexors, you know, when I'm arriving at home, but of course I'm at home right now, so it's showing that. Um, reminders that are scheduled, so I've got one scheduled for today, I've got one scheduled for Wednesday, and I can also see all of my reminders <laughs> over here. I can see flagged reminders, we did that one before, I can see my completed reminders, and I can see reminders I've assigned someone else. We'll talk about that more in a minute. More interesting, however, is these lists that I've created myself. So you'll see that I have a couple of lists. I have my main reminders list over here, but I also have three shopping lists which are in a shopping group. So you see here that I can collapse and expand that group. Now the way you create a new group is actually by going edit lists and then you can tap add group over here, okay? And then you can just say um, which lists you want in this particular group. So let me go ahead and cancel that. Um, I have my packing list um, uh, list over here, which is based on a template. So templates are pretty cool as well. What you can do when you tap add list at the bottom right is you can go to templates and then you can create a new list from a template. So I can actually tap the packing list and I can say fictional trip packing list. I will click create or tap create. And now that creates a new list with the, based on the template that I created. So that's very handy and I can start checking that off and that'll just be in this for this particular trip. Now let me delete that one. The way that you create a template, by the way, is if I just create add list, I can say um, just a list and I can tap done and I can create a reminder and another reminder. What I can then do is I can tap the ellipses at the top right and choose save as template and then tap save. And now you'll see that if I go to add list and I go to templates, you'll see that just a list sits there. I can also tap it by the way and go to edit the template. So that can be very handy in particular for I think packing lists and checklists, things of the sort. Okay, let me go ahead and cancel that and just delete that. All right, now you can share reminders. So. I have a grocery list for myself, which I use when I'm on a trip, but when I'm at home, I have a shared grocery list that I share with my girlfriend. So that means that we can both add reminders to this list and it will be synchronized and we'll see them. I can also assign some of these to her. So if I want her to go grab some toothpaste, I can open the toothpaste reminder and just tap the person icon and assign it to her. And so now what will happen is that she can go into this main screen and under assigned, she will see the reminder here. So let me actually just go back and I will assign face masks to me. And then under assigned, you'll see that face masks are assigned to me. So this can be a really great way to um, say, hey, here's some things we need to do together. You're gonna do these things. I'm gonna do these things. You can also create smart lists. And if you've watched some of my Apple Notes videos, you'll be familiar with the concept of smart folders. It works pretty much the same. So let me go to my reminders app and let me just actually create another reminder for Toastmasters. And that is bring a notebook. And I'm going to say, uh, hashtag Toastmasters. Okay, now what I want to do is say, I only want to see certain Toastmasters reminders, but not others. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to tap add list and I'm going to say Toastmasters reminders without a date. And so then I can tap make into smart list. I'm going to say, here's a filter. It has to have this tag that is the, no, not any tag, any selected tag. It has to have the Toastmasters tag and 
it should have no date assigned to it. So then I'm gonna tap done. I'm gonna tap done. You'll see now at the bottom, we have a new list, which is a smart list. And if I tap that, it'll show me only my Toastmasters reminder without a date. So smart lists can be a really handy way to slice and dice your reminders. Now at this point, you might say, hey, reminders does look quite sophisticated. I can use it for everything. I can use it to keep track of all the things that I want to do. And that's where I want to stop you. Reminders is great for some things like lists, like keeping track of groceries to buy, like a packing list or keeping a list of books that you want to read. Although personally, I would use a website such as Goodreads for that, but that's besides the point. It's good for lists. It's not great for keeping track of things to do. Let me show you why. I use a different app for keeping track of my to do's, an app called Things 3. Here it is. And if you've been to my channel before, you've seen me talk about this all the time. But let's say that I need to do something. And this is true, by the way. I'm going on a trip to Bali soon and I'll probably go diving there. Before I go, I wanna make sure that I get my scuba gear serviced. So I'm gonna create a new to-do. Now this says get my, or take my scuba gear in for servicing. Now I'm gonna assign a date to this. If we did this in the reminders app, I could only add one date to it. And what would happen if I added a date to it? I would get a notification on that date, right? How does it work in this app, Things 3? I'm going to say, well, you know what? Here's a deadline. I need to get this done by a certain date. I'm leaving on August 23rd, but there's a three-day turnaround. So I probably actually, I need it back on the 22nd, really. So I need to take it in by the 19th at the latest. And it says I have five days left. But is it a great idea to always leave things that you want to do for the last possible day? Probably not. That's probably not a very stress-free way to go through life. So what I want to do is I want to say, well, at the latest, I want to do it on Friday, but I would like to do it as soon as possible, which is actually Tuesday. That's when the scuba gear shop opens, okay? So I have two different dates here. I have the deadline, it has to be done by this time. And I have a different date that says, hey, this is when I intend to do it, when I plan to do it. And so I can separate those two things. Now, that's one thing that is much better in an app like Things 3 than in the Reminders app. And why I recommend that for to-dos, you use an app like Things 3. Now, let me just also show you something else. This particular to-do, I'm gonna add it to a project. So I'm gonna tap, instead of no project, I'm gonna say, hey, this is preparing for my Bali trip in 2022. And I'm gonna tap save. Now, what I can do is I can go to all of my projects and go to prepare for Bali trip 2022. And you'll see that I've got a bunch of tasks listed here. Now, the Reminders app has lists and you can group lists with groups, right? But lists are not the same as projects. A project is something that consists of two or more tasks that together contribute to a joint outcome. And a project this is very important. It's something you're going to complete at some point. So for example, preparing for a trip is a project. I'm going to complete that at some point. At some point, I'm done. I prepared for the trip. I'm ready to go. Let's go off. Let's go have fun in Bali, go diving, etc. right? Um, in the Reminders app, you can't do this. You can create a list, but then if you check off all the items on the list, you then have to delete the list. So it's a bit of a different way of thinking about it. Whereas in Things 3, you have projects, which are things that you finish at some point, but you also have, if I just go to a different um, thing, you have these things called areas, for example, admin and finances. Here's something that is an area. It's tasks that I have that relate to a certain area of my life. This area, admin and finances, is always going to be there. I'm always going to have admin and finances tasks, but this project, prepare for the Bali trip, at some point it's going to be done. This is, again is not a distinction that exists inside the Reminders app. Now, another thing that's very important to know is this particular task that I did, that is the take scuba gear in for servicing task. Whoops, I had a duplicate of that. It's set for Tuesday and the deadline is Friday, but there is not going to be a notification unless I tell my app, Things 3, that I want a notification. If you assign a date to a reminder, so if I just go back to Apple Reminders, let's say I were to do that here. I'm gonna say, take scuba, whoops, gear in for servicing, and I assign that to, let's choose a date, to Tuesday, even if I don't choose a time, I'm gonna get a notification for this on Tuesday morning. But what if I have 15 tasks I wanna do on Tuesday? Do I really wanna start my day by getting 15 notifications on my phone? I don't. I just want to be able to see what do I have to do today without getting a notification, unless 
there's something particularly important. So if I go to my Things app, I can go to a view called the Upcoming View. And now you'll see that there's an entry for Tuesday. Now on Tuesday, this task is listed because I said I'd like to do this on Tuesday. If I want to, I can add a reminder meaning a notification to do this. But since I check my Things app every single day, I don't really need to do this. So Apple Reminders can do a lot, but I don't recommend it for, for keeping track of things that you need to do because it's so notification focused and we all get way too many notifications in our life anyway. Also because it doesn't let you distinguish between when something has to be done by and when you'd like to do something. And those are things you'd really like to keep separate because you don't want to do everything at the last minute. And also because it doesn't make that distinction between projects and lists, where it's really handy to think of things in terms of projects you can complete versus things that are just in sort of in an area of your life that's always going on. Now, if you think, hey, I learned a lot about Apple Reminders, that's great, you know, use it for some things. If you think, hey, listen, this Things 3 app looks amazing. I have a whole course on that. It's called Organize Your Life with Things 3. So just enroll in that and you'll learn a whole workflow for being more productive and getting more organized with Things 3. Now, last thing I'll say is, obviously I like Apple Reminders. I do use it for some things. So the things that I use it for, if I just go back to my Reminders app, is I use it for packing lists. I actually find it quite helpful to use the templates feature for that. You can also do your packing list in an app like Things 3, which I've done in the past, but I find this a tad more convenient. I also use it for grocery lists, both my own grocery list, which is currently empty, and shared grocery lists. So for sharing, I also find it helpful. And of course, I use it for, whoops, back to the reminders thing, for location-based reminders, which an app like Things 3 does not support. So I think there's a use for both of these apps, but if you really wanna get serious about your task management, use a proper app like Things 3. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Why not give it a like? Would really appreciate that. Do that on your way out. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.